It pains me to say it because wrestling has been a big part of my life for three decades. It's something that I have a passion for. It's something that I love very, very much. But I can't continue to lie to myself, and I don't think it's right that I do that. And I don't think it's right that I lie to you. I don't think it's right that you lie to yourselves. We have to be completely and totally honest. At this moment in time, the whole state of the wrestling business is bad. And in fact, just in general, pro wrestling, and in particular American pro wrestling, absolutely sucks. It's true. And I think we all know it, whether or not we want to admit it or not. You know, We have to sit there and reconcile why we continue to watch it, even though we know what the truth is. But the simple fact of the matter is, pro wrestling sucks today. And in my opinion, frankly, everybody at all stages and levels is to blame for the sad, sorry state of affairs that is the business of today. Like I start off with the major companies here in the U.S., WWE, TNA, and ROH. You look at WWE, I mean, what more can I really say that I haven't said in the past? You know, a company that instead of trying to build new stars and try to find a new way of doing things has gotten incredibly complacent and lazy in what they do. Furthermore, still exhibiting the racist patterns that they have for many years at a time where their company and their product is geared towards a much more athletic presentation, they decide to negatively impact the credibility of their sport, if you will, by focusing on primarily the white athlete, which makes a lot of sense here in America when we have several sports that are dominated by the black athlete. It makes absolutely no sense. But on top of that, you've got a company that instead of building new stars, always tries to go to the same old guys, always does it in the same old damn way. And when they get really desperate, instead of trying to do something different, creative, and unique, we'll just again float out names from the past, the part-timers that can only be bothered to show up part of the time. Hence why they're called part-timers. But even more from a WWE standpoint, it's gotten so bad for them that if somebody's trying to sit there, the old argument of what company's better or what product is better to watch, you know, if somebody sits there and trots out, oh, you go watch your WWE with the Muppets. Shit, that's not even a good argument anymore. The WWE has become really crappy independent wrestling with a major budget. They don't even do sports entertainment anymore. They're just a really bad wrestling company. You look at TNA, a company that so many people over the years really wanted to get off the ground and really wanted to work, is basically irrelevant. Sorry, TNA fans, but you know it's fucking true. This is a company that does stupid thing after stupid thing after stupid thing for so many damn years, and by and large, for the most part, nobody gives a shit anymore. And you look at ROH, too. This is a company that clearly was created as TNA was created to go after the old WCW fan base. ROH was created to go after the ECW fan base, all the while missing out on the whole point of what ECW was to damn begin with. You look at ROH, and this is a company that is hard to figure out at times if they want to be a wrestling company or if they want to be a fucking karate company featuring jujitsu and taekwondo and a whole bunch of other shit. If you want to be a karate company, go open up a fucking dojo. Your production values are horrible. Your presentation is terrible. And similar for TNA. And again, from WWE standpoint, with absolutely no excuse because they have the production budget that these other companies wish they could just have a portion of, a tenth of, this company decides to put out really bad, crappy, independent wrestling on a major scale. These companies suck. Their leadership sucks. Their vision sucks. Their direction sucks. Their creative direction sucks. I mean, everything about them absolutely fucking sucks. And it's kind of, again, with this whole philosophy of the business that yesterday is today. Instead of worrying about the present and more particularly the future and trying to figure a new way forward and try to figure out a new way to do the wrestling business, the wrestling business has no idea, no fucking clue what the hell they are doing. And when in doubt, they go back to the old bad habits of yesteryear thinking that they're going to work today. Some of those things did work in the past, but it doesn't mean they're going to work now. And even worse is some of these things that haven't worked in the past, these companies are still trying to do today and are surprised when they don't freaking work. You know, it's not about where the company was in the case of the WWE 15 years ago. It's not about where the business was 15 years ago. It should be about where the business is going to be a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now. 
but the whole business as a whole is stubbornly stuck in the past in their own isolation as bullshit wrestling bubble that are too fucking stupid to see it. And then you look at the networks supporting these companies. You look at USA Network. You say, well, how are they really to blame? They give WWE a nice platform with Raw, and they give them three hours of prime time every Monday night. Well, therein lies part of the problem. USA wanted WWE to fill a third hour of television every Monday night. They gave Vince some extra money to be able to do it. How bad has Raw been consistently since they went to three hours? It's bad enough when Raw used to be bad when it was two hours. Now it's like watching a long, really, really bad movie every single Monday night for three effing hours. And what's really ridiculous about it, going back to the WWE, is these assholes do this shit every single week. You would think at least 52 Raws a year. And yet in 2015, for the most part, they can't seem to get one of them completely fucking right. I could see if you batted a low average and you were sitting there and only getting eight or ten of them right in an entire year, but those eight or ten were really, really, really damn outstanding. This company can't even get one of them fucking right. And then you look at Destination America. They double dipped into the wrestling business. Well, first TNA with Impact Wrestling and then ROH. They don't support the product. They don't promote the product. They don't follow up and again support the product they sit there and put them in crappy time slots then move them all over the place you know it's just unbelievable a, comp a network that wanted to get into the wrestling business but really didn't want to get into the wrestling business and now it's negatively impacted in my opinion not one but two freaking wrestling companies and this is not even a mention to go back to spike tv and all the bad shit they used to do with tna for years they would sit there and use them to freaking prop up their crappy Bellator, or their crappy this, or their crappy that. All they used TNA as was a device to help try and promote crappy shit that Spike TV was running, and it's that simple. Instead of trying to do something with one of their better products that they had, they just used it to prostitute out other things that they wanted to do, and you're never going to get anywhere when you have a network supporting you in that fashion, or in this case, in TNA's case, unfortunately, for many years, never really fucking getting behind him and never really supporting him. And then we look at Sinclair. Why would you buy into ROH if you're not actually going to bother investing a little freaking money in it to make it better to where it can maybe even make more money? ROH's product from a visual presentation looks exactly the same as it always fucking has. Now, some of you like that organic feeling. No, it looks like shit. And fuck Sinclair for not supporting ROH better, giving them more money, so that way they can look like something other than a ham and egg or jabroni fucking wrestling organization. But in general, you look at the business today, and it's really a reflection of today's culture, an like instant gratification society where wrestling is always best, when there's a story, when there's a buildup, and then there's a great payoff at the end, now we're in such a society that it's all about here and now and here and now. How the fuck could wrestling ever survive in that type of environment? And furthermore, you look at professional wrestling, and in general, maybe I'm being a little harsh on the business as a whole, because you look at this society, there's such a lack of originality, such a lack of creativity, that I'm surprised that anything ever does anything successfully. And when I look at professional wrestling, why should I be surprised that they kind of follow suit? Because that is the way of society today, especially here in this country. There's no originality. There's no creativity. You know, the actual product that you largely get on television is mostly shit. It's very lazily done. You know, so much of it, that's the reality TV era, if you will. It's a lot of lazy, crappy television. And as a result, should we be surprised that the wrestling business gets a, a lot of lazy, crappy television? But it goes beyond just the business, the leadership of the business, the networks, society's old. I look at the wrestlers. You know, at the end of the day, we could sit there and say, you can blame the companies, you can blame Vince McMahon, the evil devil, you can blame dumb dick, ditzy, Dixie Carter, and this and that. You can blame the people running our wage. But you know, they're not the only ones responsible and culpable here. You got to look at the wrestlers. And in particular, the lack of quality wrestlers in the business today. Boom, I fucking said it. I mean, it's, it's that simple. The wrestlers have to be a part of this too. 
because they're supposed to be the major drivers of when the business is good. So as a result, when it's not that good, they need to be responsible too. And when I look at today's wrestling business and the guys breaking into the business and the people that have been in the business for several years, to me, what I look at is I see a bunch of guys that weren't good enough to cut it in other forms of entertainment or other sports or other platforms in life, and they decided that they wanted to come to wrestling as fucking like an alternative. Or even worse, you've got nerds who wanted to be athletes that were never going to cut it anywhere else, so they've had these fantasies for years of always wanting to be a professional wrestler, and bam, here you fucking go. you got a bunch of people that are about my size that look like fucking me, that have about as much business as me in the fucking ring, wanting to be professional wrestlers, and in many cases being some of the biggest names in the business today. And we wonder why the business fucking sucks. You've got guys that don't hit the gym. Look, not everybody needs to be six foot seven, 300 pounds. The business is not good if everybody's like that. Just like the business isn't good if everybody's 5 foot 10, 185 pounds like me. There has to be variety. There has to be something different. But the one thing I would expect is for guys that are in this business for a living, knowing that their body is the platform with which they ultimately make money, make their name, make their career, you would expect that they would fucking take better care of their body. And yet you see several of these guys that appear like they barely hit the gym or in many cases don't hit the gym at all. And you in particular see this on the independent scene with people that are actually trying to break in and move up the ladder. Why the hell would anybody ever want to come and see your skinny, scrawny, beer belly yet still having fucking ass? This is your one job is to be a professional wrestler. Hit the fucking gym once in a while. I look at Neville. You can at least say he hits the fucking gym. He takes himself, his body, his crap seriously. He'll never obviously be a fucking monster. And who knows how high he'll ultimately climb in the business. But at least he looks like he gives a shit. And that does matter. Every once in a while, it's great if you have somebody that kind of has that ham and egger kind of jabroni look. Or looks like the average guy like an American Dream Dusty Woes baby. But it's a lot easier for a guy like a Dusty Rhodes to stand out if he doesn't have 30 other fucking assholes looking just like him. Yet today, in the business, instead of talking about 24-inch pythons, we're talking about 11-inch garter snakes. What really frustrates me, though, on top of the fact that these guys don't hit the fucking gym, is that they've been doing this shit for so many years, and yet they still can't talk on the fucking microphone. We can sit there and blame scripted promos until we blow them out of our fucking ass cheeks. The simple fact of the matter is, so many of these guys have no personality, no charisma, and after so many years of hopefully by this point in time being able to learn how to do it, how to hone their craft, and actually bothering to become people that can effectively talk, and therefore using one of the most powerful platforms to be able to talk people's asses in front of their televisions, or into buying tickets to put their asses in the seats at the venues, so many of these guys fucking suck! You have, again, one job! That is to be a professional wrestler. If you've been in the business five, ten years, and you still can't cut an effective promo, then shame fucking on you. How the hell does that happen? And again, I know everybody's just going to want to sit there and blame scripted promos and this and that. No, you know what? At some point in time, you can still be good in your delivery. You can still have things scripted out, and it'd be good. You can at least shine. And so many of these guys, and notoriously in the WWE, but ex not exclusively that company for sure, still don't know how to fucking talk. Still can't deliver the message. Still can't get a point across. I legitimately think right now that I'm better at a promo than 95% of the fucking wrestling business, and I barely fucking practice. And somehow along the way, these wrestlers especially the younger generation, the guys in their mid to late 20s and their early to mid 30s. They lost their way and it became about the spots and the spots equal a fucking story. You know, it's not about the veracity of the flips or kicks or the propensity for them that tells the story and captivates people and engrosses people. But so many of these fucking wrestlers think that it's about the flips and the kicks and the high spots. And again, it's a reflection of modern society today, that instant gratification, that payoff. You know, if we wanted to watch gymnastics, we'd pretend to care every four years watching the Summer Olympics, which is what our society basically does. 
If we wanted to see a bunch of kicks and a bunch of stupid crap, we'll go watch the fucking UFC or go watch kickboxing or a local tough man. These wrestlers that want to sit there because they don't hit the gym, because they still can't talk on the fucking mic, they never bothered to develop any fucking character or personality whatsoever, the only thing they think they have is to use their bodies as fucking whoopee cushions or pin cushions or whatever the fuck. Sit there and doing all types of flips and kicks and going through fucking flaming glass and tables full of shit and cocaine and every fucking thing else. That's not wrestling. And I look at so many of these wrestlers and I sit there and I think about the people that used to be in the business 15, 20, 25 years ago. And I look at the guys in the fucking business now and I say, no wonder this business is in the damn shape it's in. But it's not just the wrestlers, it's also the fucking teachers, the trainers. Who's letting these people into the business to begin with? And furthermore, once they get into the business, who the fuck's teaching them what they're being taught? And in particular, who's not teaching them what they need to be taught? So many of these fucking trainers and these old school guys, they talk about how good they teach their, how well they, excuse me, they teach their students and how good their way is. When I look at the people that you've helped bring up in the business, I say, ding dong, dumb dicks, you're as much of a fucking problem as anybody. You didn't teach your guys work ethic to hit the fucking gym. Couldn't be bothered to teach him how to talk, talk on a fucking microphone. He didn't bother to teach her how to tell a fucking story in a match in the ring. Oh, but they know because they did it. Yeah, fuck off. But I look at the wrestling media too. When you got the internet and the dirt sheets in particular, they're not too busy spoiling shit, which can ruin the element of surprise that is a big part of wrestling and makes wrestling for so many years what it has been from a good sense. You lose that element because it's always spoiled or this guy's going to be here on Monday Night Raw. This guy's going to show up at the pay-per-view. If you don't have that element of surprise in professional wrestling, that can in a lot of ways help compensate for some of the things that you don't get from the business today, then what the fuck do you have? And then on top of that, you've got them focusing on all the backstage and behind-the-scenes shit. You know, like we're all just a bunch of gossip sheets, like it's a fucking National Enquirer or some crap. But at the same point in time, You've got a lot of the members of the wrestling media, if you will, too busy kissing the ass of the business, or in particular kissing the asses of the wrestlers and the people in the business, like that's going to fucking matter. Like somebody sitting there retweeting you one time means that you matter, or that they like you. Newsflash, they don't fucking like you. They don't care. They don't respect you. And the quicker that people in the wrestling media understand this and get this, the better off the wrestling media would be. But instead, they're too busy trying to live out childhood fantasies of being able to interview wrestlers and talk to wrestlers and hang out with and be around wrestlers and living in their little fucking fantasy camp, just like the wrestlers in the business today. You want to sit there and not hit the gym and never work on your fucking mic skills, and you know what? Go pay a couple hundred bucks for a weekend and go to somebody's fucking wrestling fantasy camp. It's what they do with the old geezers with fucking baseball and football. This is what the fuck they need to do with wrestling. Get some of these jackasses out of the fucking business. All these wrestling media members. Oh my God, you're so awesome. Oh my God, you're great. You know, all this kissing of the ass of the business isn't helping any fucking buddy. It just isn't. And all the while, you've got the wrestling media focused on the wrong priorities. I always point to so many fans have learned over the years the value of the star rating. Thanks a lot for that, Dave Meltzer. You dipshit. We're focusing on the in-ring work rates and the work rate quality. And this guy's a worker and that guy's a worker. Oh, who gives a shit? The guy's character sucks. If the story heading into the match sucks, if the match doesn't tell a fucking story and the finish sucks, then I don't care how well executed the half-gator triple Nelson fuck stick off the top rope is. The match still fucking sucked, and it didn't draw any money, which is the whole point of the business, because it is a business, it's to make fucking money. But yet so much of the wrestling media is focused on the match quality and all this other shit that doesn't necessarily fucking matter to beans. And then on top of that, when we talk about the credibility of the wrestling business and how the wrestling business is perceived, if somebody goes to one of these chop shop dirt sheets, and let's face it, let's be honest, 
Again, reflecting the lack of originality and creativity in the business today. You see it play out in the wrestling media as well. If it's not P.W. Torch, if it's not somebody like Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez, Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and maybe one or two other sites, every other fucking dirt sheet you see is a chop shot for the sh inside shit that these guys actually get. Yet all the while, so many of these sites, like the no-DQs of the world and what have you, yeah, I said it, so fucking what? The people that write for these websites can't fucking write to save their fucking life and most certainly can't be bothered to spell check, which is really ridiculous because in large part, they know exactly what the hell they're doing. They're just chopping the information off of somebody else's site and using it for themselves without giving any proper full credit or paying anybody to fucking use it. It's unbelievable. But then I get to the wrestling fans. You've got the fans that are sheep that sit there and try to justify and excuse everything that their favorite company or favorite brand does. And I don't know if it makes people feel better about the crap that they're watching, that it makes it better than what it is. I don't know. You, know, you see this for years. We talk about the WWE sheep, the TNA fans, the ROH bots, if you will. It doesn't fucking matter. You know, you got people sitting there with WWE that will sit there and still try to sit there and justify John Cena having been pushed for so many years like he's some type of huge megastar. And he's fucking not. And people are so stupid about this. But they become sheep because they've been fed this propaganda for so long. It's just like what we see with our uh, state-run corporate-owned media in this country here. And we see with our politics here so much misinformation that comes as a result of the amount of propaganda that is pounded on people's throats day after day, month after month, year after year. But you've got the sheep that sit there and will defend, let's say, a TNA or an ROH having to know goddamn good and well that 20 years ago, they would have never given these companies two cents or any attention whatsoever. Absolutely none. They know it's bad, and they know it's shit, but they have to justify why they keep watching it. And as a result, they become sheep for it. They become blinded by it. You know, and then you got the ass-kissing wrestling fans, the ones that, again, similar to the wrestling media, because a lot of the wrestling media are wrestling fans. They kiss these companies' asses like it's going to matter. Maybe they think they're going to get free tickets to WrestleMania. I don't fucking know. They will kiss the wrestlers' asses and the wrestling personalities' asses like these people fucking care about you, like they like you, newsflash. They don't care about you. They don't fucking like you. They don't respect you. And kissing their ass and sucking up to them doesn't make you any better than any fucking nobody else, so get the fuck over it. Then you've got these wrestling fans that's similar to the wrestlers themselves. Imagine that. The marks in the ring are the bigger marks, but then you know, we got the marks outside of the ring too, I guess. So many people now have become so desensitized for so long to what actual good professional wrestling can look like that it's become all about instant gratification just like this society is today, and it becomes all about the flips and kicks and the high spots, and that's it. It's because a guy can flip and kick. It doesn't make it a good match. I tell you what, then here's what I'll do. Here's what I'll do. I'll get Tasteless Tony T back on camera sometime next year. We'll get ready. We'll do a big fucking OTR Central Mania match. And for 30 minutes, all we'll do is we'll fucking flip. We'll kick. We'll do a bunch of stupid high spots. Make sure we bleed like stuffed pigs. We'll fucking hit each other with every weapon under the sun. We'll no-sell like a motherfucker. Numerous false finishes and near falls. And then that way, everybody can shower us with praise of a fucking five-star match. That's how fucking stupid it is when it comes to sometimes people viewing wrestling matches. I'm talking about wrestling matches. This is how bad it's got. At least Tony and I would bother to actually try to tell a little bit of a fucking story in our half-hour blood fast and our half-hour no-selling fest. Fucking ridiculous. And then wrestling fans, I mean, frankly, you I mean, love the business so much and support it so much, but why pay for anything? Been streaming shit for years, trying to get in free for shit for years. Again, a reflection of society. So certainly not unique to wrestling fans, but you know, a, a business that's struggling in some ways, a business that could be making a whole lot more money than what it does. Part of the reason it doesn't make more money is because uh, wrestling fans that claim to love it and support it don't so much don't give the business as much money as they could or should. Because why should they when they can just get the shit for free? But it goes beyond that. Wrestling fans want new stars, but don't support them when they get them. Wrestling fans want new stars, but only certain types of stars and only their type of guys and everybody else can kiss ass. 
Wrestling fans want change, yet still ultimately accept the same and ultimately support the same and continue to try and justify why they're watching what they're watching because they have to give themselves a justification for why they're watching what they're watching. So they can bitch about the change all they want, but ultimately will still accept the same. You have, again, this is not something new and something that's not fresh to me to talk about. You've got the vocal minority that thinks that they represent the entirety of wrestling fans. And what happens instead, unfortunately, is the vocal minority is the loudest in the volume of their voice. So in a lot of ways, they're the ones that are most listened to and they outweigh the silent majority who are the people that the wrestling business should really be trying to appeal to. While not totally trying to ostracize the vocal minority, it needs to be something where you can appeal to them somewhat, but you can't get away from the core constituency. Unfortunately, the vocal minority thinks that they are the entire majority. The silent majority doesn't really care to begin with and really doesn't care with where the business is today. And basically, what do you see as a result? Dropping ratings and dropping attendance. Imagine that. And this is how bad it's gotten, I think, for wrestling fans, is that... You've got wrestling fans that talk about how much they love this business and talk about the great times of the past and the great talents of the past. But let's be perfectly frank here. If Hulk Hogan was around today, we'd be talking about how he's a steroided freak. We're talking about the 80s and 90s. But Vince is a muscle mark, and that's the only reason he's getting pushed. And his promos always sound the same. He always fucking wins. And by God, his work rate is shit. That's what wrestling fans today would say about a Hulk Hogan. If he had an Andre the Giant, he's fat, sloppy, lazy, can't talk, can't work, can't use him, can't flip with him, can't kick with him, son bitch. I don't see why they push him. He's like the great Kali, only fatter. That's what wrestling fans would say about Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. Stone Cold Steve Austin. The fans of today would get sick and tired of Austin every week. All he does is ever come out and stun people and drip beer and flip Vince McMahon and people the bird. Tired of him all he's winning. He never does the job. He never puts anybody over. And it always ends the same with Austin stunning people, drinking beer, and flipping the bird. That's so played out. That is so boring. I want to see the yes lock, okay? And then you've got the rock. God only knows what the fans of today would say about the fucking rock. I don't want to see this shit. I want wrestling. His jokes are lame. His puns are boring. He uses the same catchphrases all the time. Get over it. It was good for two months, but now it is played out and tired. We want to see clobbering time. Think about this. The wrestling fans of today have gotten so bad. that They would shit all over Hogan. They would shit all over Andre. They would shit all over Stone Cold Steve Austin. And they would shit all over the fucking Rock. And you know goddamn good they well they do. And they would. The only reason they don't shit on people like Austin The Rock now is because they're not around on a full-time basis and it's the nostalgia pop and people forget how things used to be. This is the same wrestling fan base of today that by and large thinks Ric Flair is the greatest of all time, even though when he was at the top of the Crockett promotion, that promotion ultimately went under and had to be sold out to Ted Turner, who turned it into WCW, who when that company experienced its greatest popularity and its biggest heights, it's when Ric Flair was, newsflash people, a bit fucking player. It was about Hogan, Hall, and Nash, the NWO, and a bunch of other people, Sting, everybody basically not named Ric fucking Flair. And ultimately, another company that he was at the top of for so many years went under. Yet so many people think that this guy is the greatest of all fucking time because for so many years you've had so many people tell you and shoot interviews and what have you that it's about work rate. And Ric Flair's told you how much work rate matters and this and that. And he can work circles around this guy and all this shit that doesn't fucking matter. It's his justification to try and prove his own greatness because he didn't make nearly the money of Hogan or many of these other fucking big names like Andre throughout the fucking years. And yet so many wrestling fans are too stupid to be able to see past that and buy into this crap. And in general, the philosophy, it seems like, of many wrestling fans today is that if they were building a wrestling company, they would build it on the backs of Bret Hart, Christopher Daniels, and the one-two motherfucking three kid. 
The one, two, three kid! Bret Hart, Christopher Daniels, and the one, two, three kid! Those will be the three assholes that many of you would want to build your freaking wrestling company around. So that way you can circle jerk to all the flips and kicks and high spots and no selling and false finishes and numerous uses of numerous finishers and all this other dumb shit. Oh my god, what is fucking awesome about us to me when I tell you that? But above all else, to me when I talk about wrestling fans, wrestling fans don't know what they fucking want. Frankly, I don't know what I fucking want anymore. And how could the business be any good when you're playing to an audience that you don't know what the audience is thinking because the audience doesn't know what they're thinking. A lot of wrestling fans miss the old days of the Attitude Era. Yet if a lot of that shit from the Attitude Era happened today, they would poon on it and crap on it and shit all over it. The WWE, for example, in recent years has given you a WrestleMania built around Daniel Bryan and he still crapped on the company. They gave you CM Punk with a 434-day title reign and you were crapping all over it. They've given you Seth Rollins as in his almost eight-month title reign before it just recently ended due to injury. And a lot of you started tuning out the product. And I realize there's a lot of other factors there. But this company, by and large, has given you the people that you like the most. And predictably, you don't fucking support them. And you don't fully get behind them. And their title reigns and the reigns at the top ultimately be, end up being failures. Different reasons sometimes, sure. But the lack of support by their so-called diehard fans is one part of it. And again, if I'm sitting there as a company, as a business, and I'm giving my customers exactly what they claim to want, what they're telling me that they want, and then they don't want it, then what the fuck am I supposed to do? Because then if, then if I don't give you what you want, you're fucking pissed. But then when I do give you what it seems like you want, you're also fucking pissed. And don't sit there and tell me that a lot of you fans really want great storytelling or great characters or great storylines. Because at the end of the day, when you tune into a pay-per-view, you forget all about that shit. You get half-assed matches and you overrate the fuck out of them and talk about how great it is. I look at WrestleMania 31 this year. In no way, shape, or form is that classified as a great WrestleMania. Yet numerous people came out and talked about how great a show this is. And my question ultimately is this is do you want things to be really, really good again? Or do you just want to be able to find just enough to be able to justify to continue watching it? And you don't know what you want. Like I said, for me as a fan, I don't even know what I want anymore. And most certainly based off of how the wrestling fan base in my years of interacting with them, and especially in recent years, I could clearly speak to this, is they don't know what the fuck they want. And it makes it really hard for the wrestling business to do anything other than suck. But ultimately, everybody's responsible, and everybody's involved in creating the environment of suckfest that is the professional wrestling business of today.